Welcome to Answers Unleashed, a talk show to help you reshape your brain with science and faith to find the answers in front of you. Now, uh, if you are listening, I want you to grab a piece of paper and a pen or a pencil, and I want you to tell me the answers to these particular uh, equations. The first one is, what's 15% of 200? What is 15%? Of 200. All right. The next question is what is 9 plus 6 divided by 3 times 2? Now, what is 9 plus 6 divided by 3 times 2? Now, if you do not know the answer to that, and if you froze up when you heard those math questions, guess what? You are like 9 out of 10 other Americans across the United States that more than likely has what I call a mathophobia. Now, I'll ask you a little bit more about this on Answers Unleashed. This is a talk show to help you reshape your brain with science and faith so you find the answers in front of you. And we talk about all great subjects, and one of which is how we can reshape our brain to actually contain and learn everything that we need to know to be able to move forward in life. And oftentimes people, even adults, get stuck in mathematics. They will look at an equation, they'll try and calculate a percentage, and they'll freeze up. Has that ever happened to you? When you look at a mathematical equation and you kind of just freeze up, you, you'll sometimes have a nervousness feeling. Uh, you'll start to sweat a little bit, perspire. Uh, you'll think to yourself, oh my gosh, I don't know how to do this. If that has ever happened to you, something is happening in your brain. Nine out of 10 Americans in the United States have a mathophobia. And what a mathophobia is, is it's severe fear in the reptilian part of the brain that shuts off the frontal brain lobes. Uh, Let's break this down a little bit more. The reptilian part of the brain is what regulates the fight, flight, or freeze response in the middle of stress. For example, if you saw a tarantula walking across a table and you were scared of spiders, you would have one of three reactions. You would freeze up, not move, You would run to get away from it, or you would find the heaviest thing in the room to try and to kill it. I mean, that's that is the response that the reptilian brain has in us when we try to handle fear. Now, this is most uh, fascinating because when the reptilian part of the brain fires off, it completely shuts down the frontal brain lobes. Someone who is trying to solve a problem can't solve it anytime that reptilian brain of that fear fires. So if you were trying to, let's say, uh, figure out the right time to go to the dentist and schedule your appointment, if you saw a tarantula walking across the table, you would not be thinking about your dentist appointment, would you? You would be thinking about, oh my gosh, how am I going to get out of here? Or how am I going to not let it see me? Or how would I be able to let squash it so it wouldn't get me? See, that's the phenomenon that happens in our brain. The reptilian part of the brain is excellent for us to be able to survive situations, to be able to get out alive. But it is not, it, I will repeat, it is not what we need when we are learning information, specifically when we're learning mathematics. And it's fascinating. Mathematics is the key, most fundamental subject that there is out there in the educational world that requires the frontal brain lobes to work. And let me explain what the frontal brain lobes do. The frontal brain lobes are responsible for us finding answers in our life. Now, there's no coincidence that this show is called Answers Unleashed. When I was a math professor and teaching, I'd be known to be able to find these answers. And mathematics allows us to find answers and how it does that is it it fires off in the reptil it fires off the frontal brain lobes and the frontal brain lobes are responsible for creative problem solving there is no way to actually solve a math problem without using the frontal brain lobes here is the issue when someone experiences fear they cannot use their frontal brain lobe and when someone is using their frontal brain lobes they cannot experience fear. 
It's like an on or off switch. There is no way possible for someone to experience fear and to experience creative problem solving. So if someone has any type of fear happening in their brain, they cannot solve problems. Now let's look at it, how this works with mathematics. If someone has a fear of solving problems in mathematics, that fear will trigger certain responses in your body. That fear will trigger uh, an increased heart rate. That fear would trigger uh, the panicky feeling. That fear would trigger that um, doubt in yourself on if you're doing it right. Am I doing this right? I'm not sure. And you second guess yourself and your confidence completely goes out the door. So in my book, I actually write all about this. It's in my book, Mathophobia. And if you have a chance, go to mathophobia.com. Go find it on amazon.com. Mathophobia, find it at uh, any uh, local bookstore. Mathophobia is a severe fear that shuts off the frontal brain lobes when someone is trying to solve mathematics. When someone is in the presence of fear, in that presence of being scared that they're not going to be able to solve the math problem correctly, the frontal brain, the frontal brain lobe shut off completely and someone is unable to find out what 15% of 200 is. They would be unable to calculate 9 plus 6 divided by 3 times 2 to know that the answer is 13. See, there's a lot of people that struggle with this, and it was including myself. Now, uh, if you follow the program, you know that I launched rockets. Uh, I was uh, thankful to be able to help great geniuses, fellow geniuses, launch rockets uh, to space, 28 missions through NASA's space shuttle program. And I am so honored to have been a part of the program and to send astronauts into space and using mathematics and science to do that. And I won numerous awards, um, the Modern Day Engineer, Modern Day Technology uh, Award winner for Engineer of the Year. And I was just so thankful for that. But many people do not realize that I struggled in math myself. I failed algebra. I failed geometry, failed calculus, and failed chemistry. I failed all of these subjects, and yet I became a rocket scientist. And uh, many people, all of my, all my students in my uh, classrooms as I teach as a math professor always, always ask me that question. They say, oh, wait, 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 how, how is that possible? You failed algebra, geometry, calculus, and chemistry, and you still launched rockets? And the answer was yes. I had to understand that I was facing mathophobia. And it was a teacher that sat down and helped me in my 11th grade year, Mr. Provincio. It would be great if I ever find out where Mr. Provincio is. He was such a great uh, uh, teacher. Well, if I ever get a chance, I would thank him because he sat next to me. And uh, it was an interesting story. I kept up with math, and I kept taking it. Even though I failed it, I uh, took it over in summer school and kept up with it, and I would still fail it, taking it over in summer school. And I just kept up with it. My mother said that it was most important that I understand how to do uh, mathematics and English because those are the subjects that were going to be around forever, she said. So I followed her advice. I didn't do necessarily well in math. And my professor sat next to me, and he said, um, I'm going to offer tutoring to everybody who wants to study for the AP calculus test. And so if anyone wants to come, they're able to come and uh, I offer them complimentary tutoring over the winter session. So I thought everyone was going to come and I wanted to do well on the test. So I caught the bus two hours each way just to sit with him for one hour. And no one else showed up. <laughs> I was the only one. I scrunched up just enough money to catch the 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 local bus system, $1.35 every single day, just to sit with him. And that was the best investment that I've ever made in my life. The investment of time, that bus ride, 
Because as I sat next to him, I realized that I was suffering from mathophobia, a severe fear that crippled my thinking capacity. And as he sat there with me, showing me the information one by one, I would get it and then I wouldn't get it. Then I would get it, then I wouldn't get it. And then I'd go home, not get it, then I'd come back and realize I understood it. And it was that process of learning how to look at the mathematics, how my brain operated. Everyone has a different type of brain. And when we can understand that, that and address that and perceive that and educate people in that, that's when they understand how to do mathematics. And that's what Mr. Provincio did. He sat next to me and he showed me how to look at mathematics. And um, in that process, it was great. I was able to graduate from the school and I eventually went to California State University Northridge where my first job was math tutoring where I helped over a four, five year period actually to helping in group sessions over 10,000 people understand mathematics. And that process allowed me to understand mathematics deeply myself. Allowed me to graduate um, great, uh, uh, I'm so thankful I graduated top five in a 6,500 graduating class, and I went later to work for the Boeing Company using this mathematics. But in that process of helping these 10,000 students, I recognized there were patterns that were happening with each people, and there were different types of mathophobia. And the first type of mathophobia is this, Quincy the Quitter. If you are Quincy the Quitter, you are a person who looks at a math book and you will feel overwhelmed. You will sit in the classroom and you'll look at the information and if you can recall, when you did, did sit in the classroom, if you're graduated already, you would sit in the classroom and you'd look at the information and it would feel like it would go by and you didn't understand what was going on. And you hesitated at raising your hand and asking a question because you thought that if you asked a question, everyone would think that you were dumb or stupid. That's probably more than likely what went through your brain. And these individuals, Quincy the Quitter, are, are overwhelmed when they go home to do their math homework and then they will just not open the book. They'll do everything else because that feeling of not knowing how to do something is so frustrating that it, it just freezes them up. They may be good at sports or other things that are very active, but when it comes to mathematics, they just don't feel capable. The second type of fear of mathophobia is this, Donna the Overdoer. She'll try and try and try and un try and do everything and, and she'll try and memorize everything and she'll try and do everything perfectly. And when she gets back her test, it is still not a passing grade. And she gets frustrated because she's good at everything else. She's good at writing. She's good at speaking. She's good at theater. She's good at all the other classes when she has to communicate. But when it comes to mathematics, she's just completely just frustrated because everything she tries to memorize doesn't work. The third type of fear in this mathophobia, and these are all just these characters that we all have encountered, is Samuel the Struggler. If you're Samuel the Struggler, you are a person who is in this type of situation where you are so frustrated because you understand how to do the problem, but it, it, it's the teacher doesn't understand what you are communicating. And you will look at the board sometimes and it'll go too fast or you'll try and write it down and, and the teacher's trying to, she, she or he is speaking just so fast you can't capture everything down. You need longer time to take the test and you understand how to do it but the, you're not writing it the way the teacher wants it and you become so frustrated because the teacher is not understanding what is in your brain and you are just angry. You're angry you're in this situation and you're angry that you can't get across your thoughts so someone could understand how you were looking at things. What you don't know is that if you're Samuel the Struggler, you're more than likely an Einstein in disguise. The last person is Crystal the Criticizer. She'll criticize and criticize everyone for all of her mistakes. She doesn't know how to become a beginner again. So if you're crystal to criticizer, you're looking at the board and you're thinking, I could learn this faster if I was looking at the book myself. I do not need to look at what the teacher is doing. It's just so frustrating. 
or you will feel that you can go somewhere else and learn it better through a tutor or learn it better through some other method. Go to YouTube, go to all the different types of social media that's out there. And by the way, some of the social media out there, when they solve math problems, they're incorrect. Know that. Not everything online is correctly calculated. So you, you, if you're a crystal to criticize, you're looking at this type of situation and you are thinking to yourself, I, 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 I'm just so great at everything else but this. And I am going to find some way to be an expert at this, even if it's through my own means. So if you're thinking that way, more than likely you're suffering from a fear I call crystal the criticizer part of mathophobia. Now, mathophobia actually stems from three different sources, and most people do not know this. The first type of source it stems from is from a parent. What I found out through my research in my book uh, and, and through the research of, of including that in my book, I realized that people who have had a parent who was scared of mathematics, <laughs> fascinatingly so, passed it to their children. Uh, let's just say it's Susan. Let's say Susan, the person who wasn't...